Today we're going to be learning Rosh Hashanah Daf Yudalid. Today is the Daf for Shabbat. We're going to start with a little bit of review from yesterday's Daf to get you back into where we were because we kind of left out in the middle. So we had a Mishnah, the, a Brita, sorry, a Brita with Rabbi Yosef ben Kedpa said in the name of Rabbi Shimon Shizuri the following statement. Pula Mitzri Shazara'o Lezera, if you planted it for its seeds, Miksato Ishrish Lefnei Rosh Hashanah, it had partially taken root before Rosh Hashanah and partially after Rosh Hashanah. So, you're not allowed to take Tremona Maschot from one on the other. However, what can you do? Because because we have new and old produce, you can't do that. So what do we do? We put it all in one big pile. We take Tremona Maschot from the pile. And then we assume that chances are that mixed up in what I have here, I have new and old produce. So when I take the Tremona Maschot, Right, let's say it was 50-50. So 50-50 of what I'm taking probably is new. And right, 50 of what I'm taking is new, 50 of what I'm taking is old, and that will do the Truman Maslow or whatever's in the in the pile. And it doesn't even have to be 50-50 because whatever percentage we assume is in the pile, that's probably the same percentage of what I'm taking out right now. So that should work. That's what we call Bila. So that's all fine and good. Problem is that we have the Shmuel, someone said the Shmuel holds like Rabbi Shimon Chizuli. The problem is that Shmuel also held Ain Bila. You can't use this principle of Bila. You can only use this concept of mixing things when we're talking about liquids, not solids. And this was solids. This was kidney oat, legumes, doesn't work. Then we said, oh, don't worry. It's really because Rabbi Sh- uh, uh, because Shmuel holds that when it comes to a pre, uh, when it comes to, he says, uh, when it comes to anything that's on a rabbinic level, it all goes by what, what I already said rabbinic. That's going to be part of the answer and the explanation later. But let's just say things go by when it's a pre, when the pre is ripe and ready. Okay, meaning that's when gemar pre, when the when the when the fruit, the vegetable, the legume, whatever it is, is finished. That's what determines for mass. Okay, so. This is a bit of a mess. We left it at the end of yesterday's class with a bit of a question what this means. Utsricha. So now the Gemara says, well, you need all three of these statements to work in together. And this is how, in other words, they brought this as the answer, but how does this really answer the question? So now we're going to see Utsricha. This is how it works. Beginning of today's stuff, you're done. If we had just said the halachas like Rabbi Shimon Shizuri, what would you have thought? You would have thought the Shmuel holds Yeshpila. That's exactly what we thought when we said so. Kamashman, that's why we needed this second statement. And we're going to say these three statements are all necessary to get the full picture. How so? And we're still missing the full picture. That comes to teach you he doesn't think there's Bila for everything, only for liquids. We're still left to explain to how does he hold like Rabbi Shimon Shizuri if he doesn't know by Bila. That's exactly what Rabbi Shimon Shizuri said. Now, if you would have thought there is no such law as Bila, and you would have just had that one line, right? we would have assumed in that machloka between Rabbi Shimon Shizuri and the rabbis, who the rabbis don't say that you could do Bila, he must hold like the rabbis who hold. You can't mix them up together and take from all of them on the other. You have to do Truman and Masro totally separately. But he doesn't hold that way. He holds you can't put them all together. So that's why we needed to know that the halacha is, he does hold, it's Rabbi Shimon Chizuri. But but if we had those two, and that's exactly where we're stuck. There's a clear contradiction. He holds like Shimon Chizuri, which says, yesh bila. He holds against Rabbi Shimon Chizuri, ain bila. Total contradiction. Ah, that's where the third statement comes in. Why is that important? If everything goes after Gemar Pri, then that basically means that he can hold like Shimon Shizuri, which is, what was his case? They took root before Rosh Hashanah and others took root after Rosh Hashanah and then they all grew later on in the year and he cut them and he put them in a pile together. And now he's stuck because some took root before Rosh Hashanah, some took root after Rosh Hashanah. Shimon Shizuri says, don't worry, mix them all together. Why? Bila. Well, if you cut off those last few words, I said, why Bila? You could just say, Rabbi Shimon Shazuri says, put them all together, no problem. That's what Shmuel holds. Put them all together, no problem. Why? Because the time of it taking root is an irrelevant, the fact that some took root before Hashem and some took root after Hashem, that's an irrelevant factor. 
What's important? Gmar Pri. That all happened in the current year. Therefore, they're all part of the same year and no problem. So that's why we need the third statement to tell us that. So now the Gemara says, well, why don't you just tell us that statement? Yes, me'ina. Remember, we're in the middle of a tzricha. Tzricha is why you needed this and you needed that and you needed that. Otherwise, you could have just had this one or two out of the three. Why could? So now they say, yes, me'ina. Kol olecha har gmal pli. Hava mina filu tfu'av ezetim nami. If you had just said everything follows the final fruit, and this is where I kind of told you something that I shouldn't have told you in the beginning of class that only came up now, which is a kolalecha har gmal pri, you would have thought that meant everything. Even Tfua and Zetim. What's unique about Tfua and Zetim? And really it should be Tfua and Avim and Zetim, grains, grapes, and olives, which are the three that you're obligated on the Torah level to take Trumon and So you would have said, even them also, it goes by Gemar Pri. But what did we learn about those? Those go after once it's a third grown, not fully grown, a third grown, because those are on a Torah level. So you would have thought, even Tfua and Zetim go after Gemar Pri. That's why we said he holds like Rabbi Shimon Chizuri, even though he doesn't really hold like Rabbi Shimon Chizuri, because he doesn't hold by the laws of Bila. But what is he, in what way does he hold like Rabbi Shimon Chizuri? That his case was a case of kitniot, legumes, because it was legumes where you're only obligated on a rabbinic level. He agrees with Rabbi Shimon Chizuri that the issue is on a rabbinic level, we're going to go after Gmar Pri. And then I'll agree with him that there's no problem in this particular case, the case he was discussing, because it's rabbinic. And therefore, it goes by Gmar Pri. And this was all the issue was taking root, which wasn't an issue at all for Shmua. So that's why we have this statement about I hold like Rabbi Shimon Chizuri, who was talking about kitney out to show it's only rabbinic level Masro that we're referring to. But now, why don't you have the following two? Meaning, I hold like Rabbi Shimon Shizuri and I hold Gmar Pri. That would have been enough. Why did we need this statement? It would have been obvious. He holds like him not because of the issue of Bila. He holds like him because of the other issue. So then, why do you need us to know? Obviously, you hold to Aim Bila, even though it's not really obvious. You could say he just wasn't weighing in on that issue. But let's just assume. So they say, he brought that statement because he wanted to tell you not that these don't have Bila, that we know, or maybe we know, but he wanted to tell you that there is a law of Bila for liquids. When it comes to liquids, I will hold the laws of Bila. You could take a little bit if it's all mixed in from last year's and this year's, that would be fine. That's the end of that confusing section about Shmua. Tanya. Now we're going to bring another brighta about dates, okay, and how we determine things. Rabbi, not the fruit dates, but how we determine certain dates when it comes to fruits, vegetables, etc., and different things. Rabbi Yossi Aglili Omer, says there about, it's the gathering on Chag Sukkot when you harvest your crops. Ma goren v'yekev miyuchadim? What makes Gorin and Yekev unique? That's where you keep the grains and the oil, right? The grapes and the and the um, olives. Ma Gorin v'Yekev miyuchadim shegedelim al meshana shavra. We're gonna have a machlok between Rabbi Yosef Glili and Rabbi Kiva, which is the important factor. So Rabbi Yosef Glili says, what makes those unique? Again, it's a matter of there's an example. We have an example, right? Methodologically, the Torah gives a specific example of something. We want to take that and make a general rule about it to other cases. So each one's going to do it a little bit differently. What makes those things unique? When they grow this year, they're really growing from the rains that they got last year. Any rain that comes this year isn't really helping them. It's the rains that were from last year. That's what helps them grow. So therefore, that's why those things, the Masir date, is from the previous year. Therefore, anything that's like this, which is the fruit trees that grow from the meshana shavra, from the water from last year, the rainwater, mitaschim meshana shavra. So that's why we always go batar hanata when it comes to trees. We're going to basically say, since it grew mainly from last year, right? The bud that's coming out now is from last year's rains. So therefore, it goes by last year. Yatsu yerakot, what's the exception to the rule? Vegetables. If I don't water my vegetables this year, they're not going to grow. If I don't water my fruit trees, they'll still grow. But if I don't water my vegetables, they won't grow. But if I don't water my fruit trees this year, they won't grow next year. But they won't ruin the crops from this year. 
So therefore, vegetables go by this the current year, and that's why it goes by tar kita after the cutting, when you, when you reap it. Rabbi Akiva Omer, Ba'aspecham yigor nechal mi'ikvecha. Ma gorem v'yekev miyuchadim shegedelim arov mayim. They grow by rainwater. They don't need extra irrigation. Umit asrim l'shana shavra. Anything that grows by rainwater, we're going to treat it like last year. That's what determines. So therefore, anything that grows just by rainwater is going to go by last year. Anything that goes that needs rainwater and our own watering system, that's going to go by the current year. So now they're going to say, what's my benayu? What's the difference between them? In the end, they're both saying vegetables go this way, fruits go that way. What would be a relevant difference? We're going to have an answer, but the commentaries actually give both approaches as to who actually goes which direction. Okay, we're going to bring a source and say this obviously matches one of the one of the opinions, but it's not clear which one, and we'll try to go and explain both interpretations. So again, we're going to explain itself in the opposite. So comes the Gemara and says, Okay, the these uh, onions that are sarisim, that means they don't have seeds in them, and fula mitzri, that's a type of bean. Ika benayu, that's the difference between. Ditna, what's the case about this? Salim asarisim, ufula mitzri, shemana mehemayim shloshim yom lefnei rosh shana. In the Mishnah, it says, if you didn't give them water for 30 days, you didn't water them, normally you water them. You didn't water them 30 days before rosh shana, mit asrin l'sha'aval. We do maaser based on last year. Umutari, right, when they grow in the upcoming year, because here we're saying 30 days before Shoshana. So then, right, going into the next year, they would go for Lishava. You do it like the previous year. Umutarin Bishfi'it. And then they'll be permitted on the Shemitah year, right? There's no Kedusha to them because it goes by last year. The Imlav, if not, Asurim Bishfi'it, Umutasrim Lishana Aba. But if not, they're forbidden on the Shemitah year. And do you have to meister them for the upcoming year? Okay, because you didn't, you kept watering them. So what does that have to do with anything? So one opinion is to say, Rabbi Yossi Aglili was talking about things that live off of last year's water, right? It's all about what, was it last year's water or this year's water, right? So if you didn't water it 30 days before and yet it still grew, that means it must have been living off of last year's water because you stopped giving it water. So therefore, it's going to go by last year. If you continue to water it, then it must be living off of this year's rainwater, okay? And Rabbi Akiva, who says it all goes by rov mayim or kol mayim, this would fall in the category of kol mayim because generally it's, even though this time you didn't irrigate it for 30 days, normally you provide it with water, so it's in the kol mayim category. But some people actually say the opposite. The Rabbi Akiva is saying, if you remember, his distinction is kol mayim, rov mayim. Do you does it need water or not? Normally, this needs water. It's kol mayim category, which will go by next year. But if you didn't give it water for 30 days, then you're basically switching it into the category of rain only because you're not watering it. So then it switches categories and then it's going to go by last year. Whereas Rabbi Yosef Galili, who said, may shana shavra or may shana azot, He's going to say, this is going to grow from the rainwater that you watered it with. And as you, you stopped watering it 30 days before, but you ended up watering it the next year. It's basically not growing for the rainwater there. It's growing for the rainwater of next year because you didn't rain, you didn't water it the end of last year. So it must be growing for the rainwater of this year and it should go by this year. And that's not what the Mishnah says. So therefore, right, it says only if you continually watered it, it would go by this year. So in any case, two different ways to understand who fits in with what. We're finished with the Yerakot and the Masot and all that. And now we're moving on to Echab Shvat Rosh Hashanah Le'ilan. Okay, so now we want to get to this Machlok at Beit Shammai, Beit Hillel, first of Shvat, the 15th of Shvat, and some other things as well. My time. What's the reason? Okay, we're not even really going to discuss Machlok at Beit Shammai, Beit Hillel, although we'll make reference to it. But the issue is why Shvat? What, what's unique about this month? So Amar Rabbi Elazar, Amar Rabbi Yoshaya, who il v'yatsu rov geshmei shana v'adayin rov tchufa mi b'chutz. The first part of this is understandable, the second part not so much. We'll explain it in a minute. The Gemara is going to question it and explain it better. 
The literal translation is since most of the rain has stopped at this point, most of the rainy season, right? It mostly rains December, January, beginning of February, right? By Chuba Shvat, it's basically the main rains are finished, okay? Now, maybe even November, right? The rains come in Israel for sure, right? Basically November to January, February, the heavy rains. At that point, there's some rain after, but not as much. So, I mean, you can check whether that's really accurate or not. Um, I have a sense that it's somewhat true. I don't know if it's really 100% accurate. But you still have a lot left to the winter, though. Okay? So the question is, why is that a relevant point to make you? So the Gemara says, my Kamar, what are you talking about? What does, it, what does that have to do with anything? So they say, this is how you should read it. Even though the most, most of this winter is still to come, you know, we're still in the middle of the winter season, still, you already, in a, since the majority of the rains have stopped, that's why this is the cutoff point. Okay, that makes Shvat significant. Now we're going to bring a bright. And we're going to have a few ways to understand what happened here. He had an etrog. He cut it on the first of Shvat. And what did he say? He said, well, I'm not sure what to do with this. So I'm going to do Maaser from last year. I'm going to do Maaser from this year. This is the first explanation. This is Tanakama. Tanakama says, why do you do both? Because he said, I don't know if we hold like Beit Shammai. I don't know if we hold like Beit Hillel. If we hold like Beit Shammai, this is already the new year. I have to do Maaser based on the upcoming year. Let's say it was second year going into third. So it's Maaser Ani. It has to give to the poor people. If it was Beit Hillel, we haven't yet hit Chubashvat. So it's not yet Chubashvat. We don't need to, um, it goes by the previous year. And then we're going to do Maaser Shani. Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda Omer. It was clear. Okay, what we have that's clear here is Rabbi Akiva was, ma- was machmir and did two isulim, right? He did two masal, as if it was part of both years. But we don't know why. According to Tanakama, it was because he wasn't sure about the date, whether it was Rabbi Akiva or uh, whether it was Beit Hillel or Beit Shammai. Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yudah, Omer, lo minhag Beit Shammai or Beit Hillel nahagbai. It had nothing to do with their machloke. En lo minhag Rabban Gamliel, Rabbi Eliezer nahagbai. It was all about this other machloke. Rabban Gamliel, Rabbi Eliezer. What's their machloke? It's none. Etrog, we've seen this before. Etrog shave le ilan bishloshat drachim, ule yerek bederech echad. An etrog is unique. Okay, an etrog, some people say it needs, one of the issues is it doesn't, usually trees grow only on rainwater, and this needs more than rainwater. So the question is, we're going to treat it like a vegetable for one issue. Okay, according to the Tanakam here. So what do we have? Shave le. Uh, it has all the din, the laws of Orla and Neta Revai because it's treated like a tree. And when it comes to Shemitah, it's going to be treated like a tree. However, when it comes to Maser, though, when it comes to Maser, we're going to treat it like a vegetable. We're going to take it. It's going to be considered, right? When it comes to Shemitah, it's very interesting. Comes to Shemitah, we're going to go batar chanata, like in like a tree, when it budded. And that's going to determine when it has the sanctity of the Shemitah year. But when it comes to vegetable, when it comes to uh, maser, tithing the produce, we're going to go based on when you cut it. Because it has this rain, the issue that you have to actually give it water, it's not enough rainwater. That's Yivre Rabban Gamliel. I know what you're talking about. It's a tree, dealt like a tree for everything. So now we have this machloket. If we deal like a tree and we cut it now, then it's going to go by last year because it budded last year. And then it's going to be maaser of the second year. If we say it's like a vegetable, then we're going to treat it for maaser like this year. So that's why he did two isulim, having nothing to do with tu bishvat, chabishvat, anything else like that. We're now going to raise some questions on each of the opinions. First, on Tanakam, we have dinan ketrei chumrei. Are you allowed to do like the chumrei beit shamai and the chumrei beit hilal? And that's to say, I'm going to go machmir in both directions, and I'm going to take maser like him and maser like him. We definitely can't do that. Why not? Bahatanya, there's a brayta that says very interesting brayta. Lo alam alacha kedivrei beit hilal. Really, the halacha is like beit hilal. Parotzel also kedivrei beit shamai osse kedivrei beit hilal osse. We hold like Beit Hillel, but if you want to be Machmir and go like Beit Shammai, or if there's a case you want to be, you know, you want to go like Beit Shammai, you can go like Beit Hillel, you can go like Beit Shammai, no problem. But 
Mikule Beit Shammai. If you decide to just pick and choose all the kulas, and every time, remember, we've seen cases where Beit Shammai is actually, right, he's usually more strict. Once in a while, he's more lenient. We had some cases in Beitza, if you remember. So we say, if you want to, right, you're going to pick and choose all and just take all the easy way out, you're an evil person. You can't just pick and, you know, pick. It's like going to a rabbi and saying, I'm going to pick all the kulas of all the rabbis. No, you can't do that. If you take all the chumras of Beit Shammai and all the chumras of Beit Hillel, about him, the Pesach says, you're like a silly, a, uh, a stupid person or a foolish person, I think is the better word. You're like a foolish person walking in the dark. Why is that? Because you have to go and be with a person. In other words, take a rabbi who has one approach in general. Sometimes he'll be stringent. Sometimes he'll be lenient because he thinks about it, right? It's consistent. You're like walking in the dark here. You're just saying, oh, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take that. I'm just going to be as stringent as possible. That's also not a good approach. You might think it was good to be stringent. No, no, no. Not a good approach at all. That's exactly the question. How could he have done that? You can't be stringent and say, I'm going to take master, like him and master, like him. No. Be consistent with one approach. Ella, therefore, you should do Go with your rabbi and go with him, right? Take all his kulas, take all his chumras, every direction, right? In other words, be con- not every direction, whatever, wherever he goes, that's where you should go, okay? That's the idea here. Don't pick and choose to be stringent. Don't pick and choose to be lenient. So how could he have possibly done this? So they say, well, we have to re- readjust the case a little bit. Rabbi Akiva Gemara is the people. He had a debate really about the text of the Mishnah. Gemara is, is, we use the word Gemara for Gemara, but Gemara means the limud, what he learned, his tradition. He was confused about the tradition. He wasn't sure what Beit Hillel said, who said what. He knew there was a machloket. He, he had a, there was a bit of a, a lack of clarity which one was said by Beit Hillel or not. So that was why he was stringent, because he didn't know what Beit Hillel actually said. That already makes more sense. Now we're moving on to Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda. Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda, to repeat what we already learned, Omer, lo minhag Beit Shammai, Beit Hillel, nahag ba elem, nahag rabban gamliel, v'robi leyazer, nahag ba. It wasn't about Beit Shammai, Beit Hillel. Had to do with this machlok, and about do we go based on when it was picked, or do we go based on when it was budded, which was last year. Be'chad b'shvat, ki Beit Shammai nahag ba? Wait a minute. But the whole story was it happened on the first of Shvat. So he was debating, was it last year? This year, Chab B'Shvat, that's Beit Shammai's date. You think he was going by Beit Shammai's date? We don't hold like Beit Shammai. So why would he bring a date? It was Beit Shammai's date. So I'm a Rabbi Hanin, of Itam, a Rabbi Hananya. It was either Hanin or Hananya. We're not sure who. Hacha Be'etrog Shechantu Perotav Kodem to Kodem Tetvav, the Idar Shvat Asikim. It was a case where it budded before Tuba Shvat of the previous year. And now he's in a Chabbat Shvat, which is toward the end of this coming year, you know, this year. Okay, let's say last year was the second year. This year was the third year in the cycle. And he's near the end of the year at a Chabbat Shvat. It could have been Kislev. It could have been Tevet. It could have been any month before that. But the reason that they said a Chabbat Shvat is because that was what happened. It wasn't because it has anything to do with Beit Shammai. No, that was just the way the story happened. Happened to be, it was a Chabbat It It's close to the end of the year. And the question was, does it go by the year he's in right now? But since it budded in the previous year, before the previous Tuba Shvat, does it go by the previous year? That was the question. It doesn't really matter that it was a Chabbat Shvat. Ravina Amal, that's the first answer. Ravina gives a second answer. He says, Koch Vitani. Koch Vitani means double it, okay? And reread the Mishnah, uh, the Brayta. What he wants to say is, Reread what happened here. Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Yehuda is actually arguing with Tanakama about two things. One, number one, kroch v'tane, lo echa b'shvataya, ela tu b'shvataya. Really, it was an issue of this Rosh Hashanah. But he says, but you got the dates wrong. It wasn't the first of Shvat. The story happened on tu b'shvat. That's number one, I disagree with you. Number, and then it was the new year. And that's why there was this debate, because it had butted the previous, right, before tu b'shvat. And then, but he cut it on tu b'shvat. And then I also disagree with you about the Beit Shammai Beit Hillel thing. And I think it's Rabban Gamliel, Rabbi Eliezer, the whole debate about do you go by when, it, right? Again, the etrog is this exception to the rule or is it an exception or is it not? Does it go like all trees, Atar Hanata, when it budded or does it go, now it's Tubishvat, you cut it on Tubishvat, it goes by this year. So let's read that inside. 
That was the machlok. Now we're going to have one more statement here, and we're going to bring a contradiction, and we're going to have to deal with the continuation and even the explanation of the contradiction tomorrow or on Sunday's stuff. Sorry. Says right, we do the maser after the likita after you when you when you gather it like a vegetable. Well, then it would stand to reason that what if he's treating an etrog tree like a vegetable and not like a fruit? Then when it comes to the rosh hashanah, rosh hashanah shelo tishrei and not tubishva, even though all the other trees is tubishva, the etrog is treated like vegetables. Vegetables rosh hashanah is tishrei for maserot, so this should also be. So now they say, if that's the case, maybe. We have a contradiction from the following bright. If you gathered an etrog the night, the day before Tu before the sunset, right? This is sounding familiar. We had cases like this before. And then you took another etrog from the tree after the sunset, and it's already Tu Now notice what day is critical here. The Tu day, not Tishrei. So that's going to be really the contradiction. Although we'll have to prove, and we'll do this tomorrow, how we know that this must be Rabbi Yaki, uh, Rabbi Gamliel and not Rabbi Yisrael. So then, what happened? What's the halacha? Yeah, we could finish this. We know you can't take Trumot Masra one of these fruits on the other because they're from different years. Um, right? You can't take from the new one for the old one and the old one for the new one. If we were standing in the third year, going into the fourth year. Shlishit, right? These are the two ramifications. One is you can't mix them and take one on the other. And number two, if it was the third year going into the fourth year, Shlishit, Maser Rishon, the one you gathered in the third year would be Maser Rishon. Last year, Umaser Ani, and the poor person because you're third year. Rivi'it, but if you did it on the morning of Tubashvat, the one you took from there is Maser Rishon, Maser Sheni. You would have to bring the second tithe and not the one that goes to the poor people. And then we're going to, as I said, we're going to prove in the next class that this must be Rabban Gamliel. Why? Because we go batar l'kita. This is all about the date that you gathered it. That's Rabban Gamliel. And yet, what does it say? Tu b'shvat the date, not a Chabat Tishrei. How are we going to resolve this? I will leave you in suspense. We will get back to this on Sunday morning. Have a Shabbat Shalom or Shabbat Tov.